Hi everyone and welcome again in my studio. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about stone carving hammers. As you see here we have uh, many different hammers. We have rubber hammers, we have wooden hammers, steel hammers, um, other kinds of hammers and um, I'll go through them explaining you which hammer to use in which case with what chisels and how to use them. So if you're interested let's go and see what they're all about. Okay, welcome back. So what you have to know is that there are mainly two kinds of hammers. You have indirect hammers and direct hammers. So the indirect ones are the classic hammers, as you would know, and those are used to strike a chisel to shape the rock. So there is always a chisel in between. And then you also have direct hammers, like bush hammers, which are directly used onto the stone. You might not know this, but one of the first hammers was actually a stone. We have evidence that the first stones were used as hammers as far back as three to three and a half million years ago. People used to hold the stone and used to hit it onto another stone to shape it into arrowheads, knives and other household tools. So this process took a couple of millions of years and then the next development would happen probably around 30,000 years ago and consisted in attaching a wooden handlebar to the stone. So basically you would have a classic hammer with a stone on top which was attached through ropes. That would allow people to be a bit more precise in the strike and also to put more energy in it without injuring themselves by accidentally hitting their hands on the tools that they were shaping. Then that process would have been followed by wooden hammers, obviously, and then the Iron Age came and hammers would have been fashioned by iron. Previously to that, softer metals were used like copper. And now today we still have iron hammers or let's call them uh, soft steel hammers like this one and we have also hardened steel hammers like this one. I'll tell you about them in a minute. And currently the wooden hammers have been replaced by synthetic hammers because wooden hammers tend to deform and the chisel tends to shape the head of the hammer as well whereas synthetic hammers maintain their shape throughout a lifetime basically. Then we have bush hammers, as I told you before, the direct hammers, I'll talk to you about them as well. And then we have a very modern development of the hammers, which are the pneumatic hammers. I'm just showing them to you today. We have pneumatic hammers of different sizes. These are two. You have also other shapes. I'm not going to talk about pneumatic hammers because I will dedicate an entire episode only to them in the future. So today I am limiting myself to classic handheld hammers. And then we have the uh, sledge hammer, which we don't really use too much in stone carving, but it's, uh, it's cool to have, it's nice to show, and eventually we use it as well to split larger stones, but I will not go into that today. So we already talked about the use of the stone as a hammer, so we don't need this anymore. And the next development would have been the wooden hammers. Wooden hammers are generally used for woodworking and for softer stone carving. So not marble, but alabaster or uh, soft stones like those. They're also generally used with chisels with wooden handles. So you would not use traditional stone carving hammers, which are uh, completely made out of steel, because what happens is that while you carve, not only you're shaping the stone, but the harder steel is also shaping the wood. So for example, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but this wooden hammer is a little bit deformed on its striking end due to the chisel. There is here a bit of a depression and that is caused by excessive use with the chisel. So if using wooden hammers, use them with chisels with a 
wooden handle and softer stones. But today we have solved this issue by manufacturing hammers in synthetic materials like these ones. They are in plastic, they come in different shapes and the good thing about them is that they almost never lose their shape. They are also rounded for a reason, they're very comfortable, you can use them to carve in different directions, but more on that later. Okay, let's have a look at the classic steel hammers. This is what you might generally know and this is what you find at a uh, hardware store. These are called club hammers or square hammers and this is because they have a perfectly square shape. Now, stone carving hammers have a slight different shape and that is that they are a bit more, they have a curved shape. I don't know if you can see it clearly here. They're not perfectly squared like this one, but they have a curved shape and their sides are slightly tapered. And the shape of this hammer comes from the wooden hammers. For example, you can see this hammer shows you more clearly what I've been talking about. So there is a curve here and the sides are tapered. I suspect that this comes from the working. So while you're working, the shape of the striking head would have been formed by the uh, countless hits with the chisel. And this is actually even more true with the steel hammer. Originally they were in iron. Iron is softer than steel. And as you can see in this one, the ridges are deformed. And that is exactly because the steel has been pushed by the chisel. You see here how this ridge had been deformed. And this is because this is a soft steel hammer. If this happens to you, I suggest you to remove them because they can be quite sharp and dangerous. You can cut yourself on these ones. And then later, when they start fashioning hammers out of hardened steel, they would eventually manufacture them in the same shape as the soft steel one. Another characteristic of these hammers is that they make the working a bit more comfortable. As you see, the movement of carving is a round movement. There is a fixed place, which is here at the elbow, and then you swipe the hammer up and down like this, and it's a round movement. So I think, I haven't found any uh, evidence for this, but I think that the tapered ends help this movement, help the acceleration, and helps to have a more concentrated energy on one point which would be the chisel head. Okay, things might have been a bit confusing here. I've been talking about iron hammers, I've been talking about soft steel hammers, I've been talking about hardened steel hammers, so let's see what this is all about. So why all these differences? Why not just a steel hammers? Why a iron hammer and a soft steel hammer and a hardened hammer? The reason has to do with a few variables. So bear with me here for a minute, because this might sound complicated and it might be confusing. It's actually pretty simple, but I need your full attention. So, as you know, you have different kinds of chisels. You have chisels like this one, which are completely fashioned out of steel, with the peculiarity that one side, the striking end, consists of soft steel, while the point is made out of hardened steel. So this part is harder than the striking end. So you have the stone, which is hard. Then you got the point, which is hard. Then you have the steel of the hammer, which is hard. And then you need something in between, which is soft. And in this case, it's the head of the striking end of the chisel. You have other chisels, which are made out of carbide points, like this one. So the point here is extremely hard, much harder than the hardened steel points, but their striking end in this case is also hard. So you need a softer hammer to hit on this end. And as you can see, the shape of the striking end of this chisel is different from the other ones, and it's already fashioned in the mushroom-like shape that develops with the soft end of this kind of chisels. So let me reiterate. The stone is hard, the chisels are hard, the hammers are hard. You need one thing in between that dampens the hit, that also avoids injuries on your body. So sometimes 
is the chisel head which is soft and sometimes is the hammer which is soft, in this case the soft steel hammer or the wooden or synthetic hammers. And of course this will have also its impact on the surface of the stone. The blow will be a bit more gentle, more round, full, will be more comfortable to work. In this way imagine if you wouldn't have a dampening factor in between. We as carver work for hours a day and we need something to ease the process. Otherwise we would feel the vibration on our body. We might injure our shoulders, our elbows, our wrists. So keep this in mind because it's very important. But eventually you'll get the hang of it with the experience. But one thing that you need to remember is never to use a hard steel hammer on a hardened steel striking edge of a chisel. Okay, this was it for the classic club hammers, like these ones, we don't need them. One last thing, of course they come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, this is the quite a big one, it's almost a kilo. This is of course almost two kilos, I think. This is 750 grams. And then you have also small ones. Never used it, I don't know what for, but they come in different shapes and of course they are adapted to the stage in which you are working and the kinds of chisels. No use to use small hammers with big chisels, so they always go together. That's it for these hammers. Let's have a look at the round mallets, these ones. So round mallets are very nice and comfortable hammers. As I said before, these are in uh, synthetic fabric, plastic generally and they are very durable very comfortable also these ones come in different sizes and shape this is a more elongated one they always have this tapered shape as you can see and you also have them in steel this is a very comfortable little round mallet this one is in steel you also have them in copper or brass these are especially made for letter carving as they are lighter more precise more fine, you can control the blows incredibly well. So why round hammers, you may ask? What is the difference between a round hammer, why do we have them, compared to the club hammers like this one? Let me go get one chisel and I'll show you. So these are two letter carving chisels, especially this one. And for example, when carving letters, you need to be very flexible with the movement of the chisel, of the way you hold the chisel and of the hammer. So you are able to do all kinds of movement with this hammer, very flowing movement. For example, when you need to carve an S or an O or a Q, you need to be able to do these kind of movements. And the round tapered head allows you to strike the chisel from different directions and also different angles with it. Whereas the classic club hammer for stone carving has only one place where you can strike the chisel and it's this one. So the small round mallet is usually used for letter carving of course but also for details. While the larger round mallets like this one are generally used for stone masonry purposes. For example a classical combination is a hammer like this and a chisel like this, a very wide flat chisel with a hardened steel striking end. This is, for example, used for flattening the surface of a stone. It's a beautiful technique. I hope to do an episode only dedicated to that technique, explaining you all the stages. But also another advantage that you have with these hammers is that because they are so large, and round, the chances that you might hit your hand while carving are very low. With these hammers you'll eventually experience slipping through the head of the hammer and hitting your hand, sometimes cutting your fingers or hitting your fingers, they might hurt. Unfortunately it's inevitable, it's part of the process, but the chances of experiencing that with these kind of hammers is very low. Okay, we've talked about the not direct hammers, the one that you would use on a chisel. Before we go and talk about the direct hammers, let me first tell you another thing about the grip and how to hold and how to use 
all these hammers. So first of all, as you all know, hammers have a handle. This handle has a reason and needs to be used in its full length. So very brief, short physics lesson here. As you know, the energy that is created from a hammer consists of the weight of the head and the speed. Classic formula is energy equals mass and speed. So the way you generate energy is by launching the hammer, by accelerating during its use, okay? So it's not a matter of muscles. I have many people asking me if stone carving is not too exhausting, if you need big muscles for it, and if it is only for men, definitely not. You should be smart about it and use the weight of the hammer and not your muscles. So just let the hammers drop. And in order to enhance the acceleration, you need to hold the hammer all the way down at the handle. If you hold it higher up, you'll be less able to generate that force. So if you want to have a big impact on the chisel and on the stone, hold the hammer all the way down and really make big movements so that you can generate the speed to hit the hammer. Here again I'll make also another episode dedicated entirely to the use of the hammers but what you need to know again is that these hammers have to be held here but if you don't have smaller lighter hammers and you need to have a more delicate touch you can change the grip of the hammer to adapt to that. For example you can hold this hammer like this to use this striking end for heavy work. If you need to be a bit more delicate, you can hold it higher up. And what we usually do is that we change our grip like this and then we use this striking end. And we work like this to hit the stone. If you need to be even more delicate, then we change the grip from here to here. And then this becomes the handle and this becomes the striking hand, and then you use it like this. So these are homemade solutions to change the force with which you use the hammer. But of course, if you have smaller hammers, like this one, again, which I never used, or these ones, then I suggest you to use these ones. And even in these cases, the height at which you hold the hammer changes the strength with which you strike the chisels. At a lower grip, you'll be able to generate more energy, and then at a higher grip, you'll be more delicate, more precise. Okay, I think that this was a good general introduction into the indirect hammers. Let's make some space and go and have a look at the direct hammers. So what are direct hammers? Direct hammers are hammers that are used directly onto the stone without a chisel in between. You have many types. Here with me I have a pick hammer with a point on one side and a bush hammer like head on the other side. And here I have a real bush hammer. Let's start with the pick hammer. A pick hammer has a point on one side and it's generally used in the first stages of carving a statue. And the way you use it is fairly simple. Just hold it at a straight angle onto the surface of the stone and then you just go up and down. It's a fairly easy hammer, there's not much more to say about it. You can maintain the sharpness of the point with a bench grinder or with a file. They come obviously in different sizes. And on this other side, this one has a bush hammer like head. But if we're going to talk about bush hammers, let's take a real bush hammer like this one. A bush hammer is generally a very heavy hammer. This is about two kilo and it looks somewhat like a uh, meat softener hammer that you might have seen at a butcher shop. It is generally used in the first stages of a work. Basically, it's just a set of points. Let me show you closer. If you look, the head of the hammer, which can be replaced like this hammer, consists of 
a set of small points like this one, the point chisel, but here they are all aligned next to each other. In this case you have a row of 4x4 four four, and in this other case they are just slightly smaller and they are 5x5. Five five. You have different combinations of this. And what it basically does is it gives the texture to the surface of the stone. Let me show you how to use it, but first let me go and get my protection glasses. Guys, always remember to wear protection glasses because working with stone can be quite dangerous and not only because of the chips of stone that come out of the stone but usually it's also possible that pieces of metal from your tools might break and they might get into your eyes as well and these are more dangerous so please be careful. Since the bush hammer is a heavy hammer you would hold it with two hands and perpendicular to the surface of the stone and then you go up and down with it. One thing that you have to keep in mind when working with bush hammers like this or a pick hammer is that whenever you use pointed tools, even pointed chisels, on the surface of stones like marble, these leave marks on the stone that are very hard to remove. For example, if you look at the surface of this stone, you can see here all the marks left by the bush hammer and the pick hammer. Now, if you want to polish the surface, these marks will always be visible. For example, you can see here a white dot. I don't feel it if I go over it with my hand. This means that the crystals of the stone are broken. You can think of the blows as a shock wave that breaks all the crystals. That goes as deep as one centimeter. So if you want to perfectly polish this stone, you would need to carve another centimeter deep. So if you're planning on polishing your statue, don't use bush hammers or pointed chisels or pick hammers too close to the final surface. Stop at least one centimeter or even two centimeters from the final surface and then go at it with smaller chisels and finer blows. I haven't talked about the sledgehammer today. It deserves a whole episode for itself, which I will do in the future. But uh, this was it for today. I hope the information I shared was useful. If you have any comments, any suggestions, any questions, leave them below and I'll be more than happy to check them out for you. And I'll see you next time.